Today we will spend some time on the micromixed limit of a given RTD. So this takes off from where we left off last uh, class where we were saying that you know this diff this business of whether elements of fluid mix early or late will not make a difference to the RTD because RTD only senses the distribution of residence times at the outlet okay after the fluid has lived its life in the reactor and so but it might make a difference to the reaction because reaction you know depends on the rate and rate depends on the concentration concentration depends on mixing events right and so we said uh, okay we wanted to understand under what circumstances do we need to worry about more than the RTD in order to predict the conversion right so we said that we took a hypothetical reactor with just two fluid elements and one of which has both fluid elements start with the concentration CA0 right one spends longer in the reactor than the other one so by the time the second one enters the first one has already reacted to some extent and it has its concentration has become less than CA0 and it is CA1 and the other element enters at that point so after this element has spent T1 seconds in the reactor and then the remaining time for both of these elements is the same right so if you look at the RTD of this such, such a situation E versus time there will be a delta function at so if the this is T2 okay there will be a delta function at T1 corresponding to this Uh, at T2 corresponding to this and a delta function at T1 plus T2 corresponding to both of them I mean corresponding to the second one. The T2 one will come out earlier okay. right mm -hmm. and so that is a delta function and so this one will come out as having spent t1 plus t2 seconds in the right so now but this rtd will not change in the first case when these two will not mix right irrespective of the fact that this fellow has entered the reactor the other chap doesn't care right so the two will live their lives independently and the end of t uh, at the end of t1 plus t2 seconds for the first one and t2 seconds for the second one they live together okay and so this is case A and case B is same thing CA0 and this is at CA1 and this is now entering at CA0 but now they mix and the remaining T2 seconds they spend together in a mixed state and then go out okay in either case the RTD will be the same right so and we said that if we look at the rate behavior as a function of concentration so now what we have to compare is the rates at this point after at the end of t1 seconds if the elements are separate versus when they are mixed right so in this case since this is at CA1 and this is at CA0, this has rate at CA1, this has rate at CA0. So this will give us, give us the average of the rates, the rate in the in the entire reactor which contains, contains just these two elements is average of rates, okay. And this can be called as the segregated case or the macro fluid case or the late mixing case, right and this one is called the micro mixed state or the early mixing case or the micro fluid case and here it is at this point is it, it is rate at 
average concentration. Okay, see one mixes with CA0 and the concentrations get averaged and therefore you get a rate per unit volume which is at that average concentration, right? So these two, if this is higher than that, then the segregated case will give you a higher conversion because it is reacting at a higher rate. So we wanted to understand under what circumstances do the two differ, okay? And so we looked at the rate behavior as a function of concentration and CA0 is somewhere there and CA1 is somewhere here and we drew typical rate curves this is first order where rate is proportional to concentration right linear function of concentration this is n greater than 1 and this is n less than 1 right so in general the shapes are going to be you know concave to the x axis for the reactions of order less than 1 and concave to the y axis for reactions of higher order right so this we can analyze by looking at this situation here and the average concentration is here in the middle of the two if the two liquid elements have been assumed to be of same volume right so rate per unit volume in the in unit usually rate units of moles converted per second per centimeter cube uh, so this is the average concentration so in this case we see that if you draw a line here if you join these two points by a straight line this is the rate curve so at this concentration the rate will be higher in this case because we are looking at rate at the average concentration so for n equal n less than 1 this is better in the sense that it gives higher rate right and for the other case we have to average these two rates, rate at this concentration, rate at that concentration have to be averaged. So it will be the midpoint of this, so it will be, it will be somewhere there. Oh, sorry. It will be this, this is R bar. So average of the rates is less than rate at the average concentration. So this is better, right? In the other case, for first order, it doesn't make any difference, right? In the other case, if we join these two, we, we see that rate at the average concentration is better than, I mean, rate at the average concentration is worse than the average of the rates. So average of the rates, this is for n greater than 1, this is better. Okay, so for reactions of order higher than one, a segregated flow where elements mix late in their lives is better. Okay, and you know this can this relates to what we already know in the case of CSTR and plug flow reactor. In the plug flow reactor, they don't you know there is no mixing. In the CSTR, there is perfect mixing, and CSTR always gives a worse performance. Okay, now here this uh, that is true only in the case of reactions of order higher than one right when elements remain separate and then mix at the end you get a better performance if the reaction is of order higher than one if the reaction is less than uh, reaction order is less than one then you will get a behavior that is uh, uh, better for the case of uh, for the situation in which the elements of fluid mix early rather than late okay so now if we look a little deeper into so what we are saying here is that what we are doing here is that we are considering two elements which have the same amount of life left in the reactor they have spent different lengths of time staying in the reactor but at, we are looking at the situation when we, the remaining life is the same for both okay so this remaining life is naturally it can be called as life expectancy
okay and we denote it by the Greek letter lambda. Life expectancy for a liquid element is the amount of uh, time it has left to spend in the reactor at any point in time in, during its stay in the reactor. Okay, So, we will keep that in mind and we will derive a distribution for the life expectancy and so on. But uh, before that let us look at what is actually you know how can we assess based on some characteristic times as to when micro mixing is important and when it is not. Of course, this order of reaction is one. Okay, So, the, the discussion of consideration of time scales, okay, if you think about it, there are three important time scales that decide the performance of a vessel in reaction. One is the reaction time, characteristic reaction time. Okay, and this we can call TRX, right? And for a nth order reaction, we have usually derived it in that manner. Okay, for a A going to B minus RA is K C A to the power N. Okay. If you take that kind of a situation, okay, then we have usually defined the characteristic reaction time in this manner. This will have units of reciprocal time. I mean, Kc naught n minus one will have units of reciprocal time. So reciprocal of that will have units of time. All right? Yeah. Sir, uh, what does uh, the characteristic reaction in physical sense? It it is uh, the time that the reaction requires in order to produce a reasonable conversion. Five, high conversion. Okay. For example, if it is a first order reaction, then 1 over k is the characteristic time. If T is equal to 1 over k in a batch reactor, okay. if T is equal to 1 over k in a batch reactor, the concentration is C A naught into e to the power minus k T. Okay. So, if K T is equal to 1 over k, k T is 1. So, the concentration will be C A naught into e to the power minus 1. That is coming out. Yeah, it's coming, yeah, no, not coming out. This is a batch reactor. Achha, yeah. Reacted. yeah. At the end of t seconds, it will have this concentration. And this will be like, uh, you know, 1 minus 0.632. E is 1.632, right? Is that is the maximum conversion that occurred for that period of time. That period. So, this, this is the, in this time, the conversion is like 63 percent. Okay. Concentration reduces by that time. So, in other words, this is. The, if the uh, the reaction requires about this kind of time in order to produce you know a high conversion in a in a qualitative sense right and so this is first order reaction for a nth order reaction it becomes this right so this is this is you know in all this we are talking about characteristic times which are like you know the time that is representative of something this is the time that representative of you know what the reaction is demanding. So, reaction is saying you give me about this kind of time, I will give you a high conversion. Alright. So, it is related to the rate of the reaction. Right. So, this is one and the second thing is the time you actually give the reaction. That depends on how long you allow the reaction mixture to stay in the vessel. Right. So, the characteristic time of stay. And this we can write it as T of stay and this can be regarded as tau. Okay. So, when we talk about damp color number, we are comparing these two. Right? The reaction is asking for this kind of time and you are giving the reaction this kind of time. If you are, if you are, if what you are giving the reaction is much smaller than what the reaction requires, you will not get a high conversion. If you are giving a time that is more than what the reaction requires, you will get a high conversion. Okay, that is the color number, which is a comparison of these two time scales. Right? Now, these two we are already aware of, but in, in considerations of mixing, we also need a characteristic time of mixing, which is a function of the vessel design, how the vessel has been designed, what kind of agitator you have, how fast the agitator is rotating, and so on. Okay? So, this we will call as 
Tmx. How can this be determined? We can do an experiment like this. I have a, I have a, let's say a batch vessel, which is, there is some stirrer and everything, right? So, you adjust the stirrer speed and everything, let the reactor settle down to a steady hydrodynamic condition, okay? At that point, you inject a pulse of tracer in one corner of the vessel and monitor it at the opposite corner diagonally opposite corner, okay. So, what do you expect to see? The concentration, you know, if you want uh, uh, the concentration of the well mixed state. So, uh, supposing if you are injecting m grams, m, uh, m divided by V is the final concentration that when everything is evened out, when it is completely mixed, you will get C infinity. So, supposing you at any time you are plotting this dimensionless concentration C divided by C infinity as a function of time. So, ultimately it will get there, right. But in between it will go up and down because, you know, when the stirrer rotates it conveys the tracer to this point and then takes it away from that point. So, I might get a curve something like this. Right? Okay, so it will not go, uh, it may go above the concentration also because. Can you repeat this part? The last one. So, the concentration here is m divided by a very small volume, which is a very high concentration, right? So, the final concentration is this. When this m is uniformly distributed in the entire volume, is m by infinity. So, ultimately, as you keep on stirring, you know, it is like you put some sugar and keep on stirring. It will take some time and after that the entire liquid is equally sweet, right? So that is that, right? But in between, uh, at this point the concentration will go up and down, right? And so you might get a very noisy curve like this, right? So you can smoothen this out and you can say that I want to look at the time when the mixing is 95% complete. So I can say this plus or minus 5%. So, this is C, this is 1, this is 1.05, that is 0.95, okay. And define this, whenever the oscillations are contained within these two, I can contain, I can define that as T.95 and call it as 95 percent mixing time, all right. So, this is what we use in this. So, people have de done these kinds of experiments for various geometries. There is in stirred tanks, there is something called the standard geometry, where the height of the liquid is equal to the diameter of the vessel. The uh, agitator diameter is one third of the diameter of the vessel. And there are, if there are baffles, the baffles are one tenth the diameter of the vessel. So, all these ratios are fixed. There is something called as a standard geometry, okay. And for standard geometry, there is a lot of data. For other kinds of geometry, there is less data. But what people have done is this, uh, this T.95 for a given geometry, they have related this to the RPM, okay. So, if you look at the revolutions per second, and multiply this by that, this is dimensionless, okay. This you can plot as a function of, you know, the liquid properties and things like that. And so, there are correlations available for this for a given geometry. So, if you know the ratios of the, di you know, impeller diameter to the vessel diameter and all of those ratios, if you know, for that geometry, you can usually find a correlation. Otherwise, you can do your experiments and determine this. Right. So, from those correlations, you can calculate this T mixing. So, uh, you were saying that uh, the for, for, mix, for the time that we require to reach the steady state, hmm. so it will also depend on the RPM speed also. This is not steady, steady, steady concentration. Uh, sorry, steady ah. concentration. It will depend on the RPM. Yeah. So, if the RPM is very high, you might get a less time. To, yeah. You might get a curve like this. So right? This is lower RPM. Right? So, Sir, and this geometry is 
geometry of the entire uh, thing because the hydrodynamics inside the reactor is dependent on how big the stirrer is and how big the in relation to the reactor diameter how deep is the volume of liquid where is the stirrer placed whether it is placed here or there up there or underneath so all of these geometrical details are important and that n is, hmm? what is that n? n is the revolutions per second so stirrer speed So anyway, this is, this is a way of characterizing mixing, I mean the time it takes for reasonable amount of mixing to occur within the reactor given the hydrodynamic conditions and the liquid properties and everything. So there are, we are, there are ways of measuring all of these, right. So now we can expect that we can consider various situations. First let us consider situations in which there is a premixed feed. In other words, you have this vessel. If A and B are the reactants, they are mixed before they enter the vessel and the mixture is sent into the vessel, right? And then, of course, you are taking it out, okay? So, in this situation, the first case is let us say that time for reaction is much greater than the time you are allowing for the reaction and mixing time is also much less than the T uh, required for reaction, okay. Reaction much less greater than T allowing. Sorry? What is the second term? T stay. T stay. T stay. This is tau, okay, this is the holding time, okay. So in this case, what do you expect? The reaction requires lot of time, you are giving it very less time. So very low conversion. So this is a situation where your Damkohler number, which is the ratio of these two, right, is much less than one. So this Damkohler number is like you, you are aware of this, no? Damkohler number for a CSTR. Uh, I mean conversion versus Damkohler number. You know, for a first order reaction, Damkohler number is k tau, and conversion is k tau by one plus k tau for a CSTR, right? So if Damkohler number is very large compared to one, x is like one, right? If it's very small, it is equal to Damkohler number, right? So so in this case, the conversion is very small and whether you have plug flow reactor or CSTR plug flow reactor will give a slightly higher than higher conversion, but not much higher. So you are not giving it enough time, whether it is in plug flow reactor or CSTR. So here, uh, nothing really matters in terms of RTD, whether it is plug flow reactor or whether it is CSTR. Uh, I mean, we know that PFR is better than CSTR, but not by much, okay. So nothing means very little matters. So when you are talking about better, you mean in terms of the conversion? Conversion, higher conversion, right. So I can say X PFR is greater than X CSTR. But anyhow, PFR will have a better conversion. We'll have a better conversion, but maybe, you know, 5 percent, 7 percent better which is not really uh, worth worrying about because you know these rate constants are all experimentally measured and they are not exactly known. They are not known within plus or minus 10 percent or something like that, right. So given the uncertainties in rate constants and all that, this is not worth worrying about, right. The second case is when the T reaction is comparable to T stay. The time for you are allowing is uh, comparable and T stay is much less than T mixing. Usually mixing processes are much smaller than, much faster than you know the flow processes, okay. So if you have done any, any decent design of a CSTR, you will see that you know the, the mixing is uh, uh, you know quite 
adequate, right? So this is usually the case. So in this case, we have a Damkolo number that is something like one. It may be one, two, three, etc. It is order of one. You get a reasonable conversion, right? Depending on the Damkolo number, and here. RTD is important, okay, because plug flow reactor will be decidedly better than CSTR and any reactor will be somewhere in between and how far it is close to, I mean how far it is, where it is between PFR and CSTR depends on its RTD, okay. So if you know the RTD, because the time of stay is much less than the time of mixing, you can make a micro mixing assumption, micro fluid assumption and calculate the conversion on that basis and you will be alright. So, we are, we are talking about a feed that is pre-mixed, right? Ah, feed is pre-mixed, but then once it enters the reactor and starts uh, reacting, okay. there will be liquid elements with different concentrations. Okay, so you are talking about like mixing within the reactor. With mixing within and the reactor. It is taking more time compared to the reaction and the Yeah, system. yeah. So, uh, with RTD, you make a microfluid assumption. How to calculate this, we have no, I have not yet told you, but I will do that presently. But with that assumption, you can calculate. In yeah. Reactor, other liquids are also there. Sorry? In the reactor, other liquids are also there. In the reactor? Other liquids are also there that we are talking that. that no, it is a reaction mixture only. But it is a mixture of this premixed feed having reacted to different extents. So, different concentrations are there. If you randomly sample some part of the reactor, it will not have the feed concentration, right? It will have some, some other concentration because it has reacted to some extent. So, huh. so that is what? So, so this has some RTD, right? This has some RTD, which tells you that it is not a perfectly mixed vessel, right? So, it is not perfectly mixed, but locally the mixing is good, right? So, in one between one location and another location in the reactor, there is the mixing is not perfect because if it is, then it already will be like exponential, right? But in a local situation, if you if you take a small sample, then there it is, there are elements of different ages within that sample and they are all well mixed. If they are well mixed, shouldn't the time taken to mix be low? Yeah, time taken to mixing will be, yeah, so, oh, sorry, T stays more than Tmx. Tmx is very small. Yeah, yeah. Okay, most reactions fall into this category because if you are a designer worthy or salt, then, then you will design a reactor such that the Mixing time is much less than the time of stay and therefore, yeah, mixing time is short, right? And therefore, this will be, so this is what most reactions will fall into this, right? The other extreme case is T reaction is much less than T stay, okay? No matter what you do, however much uh, you try, the reaction is much faster than how, whatever uh, time you can give the reaction, okay? So here you are looking at very high conversions, but that depends on the mixing time, right? The conversion, right? So now in this case, so these are like reactions like neutralization, for example. You have all done titrations, right? You put you put acid into base and immediately there is a color change depending on you know what is the uh, indicator that you are using and then so locally the reaction is complete but everywhere else the reaction is you know till you stir it okay till you mix the shake flask the color doesn't become uniform right so in this case you will need to know rtd as well as the micro mixed state that is local or early or late mixing, early versus 
this detail needs to be known in order to pinpoint the conversion. Okay, but that's a that's an ideal situation that we cannot appro uh, approach. We can measure the RTD, but we cannot exactly measure the micromix state or exactly when the mixing is happening within the vessel. That is what that is seen at the end. Okay, so this is difficult to measure. There are techniques, but it is it is complicated. Okay, therefore the best we can do in this case is for the given RTD, what is the uh, what is the limiting conversion if it is completely micro mixed molecular molecular mixing and or earliest mixing equivalently and what is the conversion if the mixing takes place at the latest point that is just before going these two limits we can calculate and say that the conversion is somewhere in between right in particular if the uh, if both of these is if t mixing is large which is the situation in your titration because you are doing a hand mixing right so in this case the reaction is the reaction rate or conversion is completely controlled by mixing this is what we call as an instantaneous reaction so we saw some examples in the previous problem sets where the reaction between ammonia and formalin right so as soon as the the reaction only goes as fast as you can add the material and mix it mix it well right so this is the third situation and all of these are for a premixed feed if the feed is not premixed that is if you have a vessel in which a is going and b is going by a separate port and the mix only within the vessel then of course you need to know sir in case 2 we will uh, consider micro mixing and in case 3 we will consider micro micro board like this could be either sorry i didn't get your uh, in case 2 you case said, 2 uh. we will consider micro and in case 3 we will consider both macro and micro in uh, yeah in in case 2 we because of this situation because t mixing is quite small we can assume that locally there is good mixing and therefore we uh, make the microfluid assumption how to calculate conversion for that i will tell you in a minute right but for the given rtd if the if the mixing state is maximally mixed okay or micro mixed then what is the conversion that is a reasonable estimate for this case right so if if a and b are entering by separate ports then you need to know not only the rtd but the micro mixed state whether it is completely micro mixed completely segregated where it is in between all of that you need to know and whether mixing is take, taking place early or late so all of this you need to know yeah what is the difference between this micro mix state and early versus late mixing so micro mix state is uh, micro mix state in in a general sense refers to what is the level of mixing in a local sense right so maximum micro mixing or what is uh, what zwittering calls the maximum mixedness is the extreme limit of micro mixing where it is molecularly spread out throughout the reactor yeah. right so that is the micro mix state and this case also corresponds to the earliest mixing that is you are adding a liquid as soon as it is added it mixes completely the other extreme is macro mix state which is the micro mixing level is very small or negligible right so liquid exists as blobs of liquid they they don't mix at all till they come out together okay and that corresponds to the latest point in mixing okay but in between these extremes a micro mix state may exist which cannot you know you cannot assign a you know exactly which point uh, in the life mixing is occurring okay so these two the micro mix state the maximum 
mixedness state corresponds to one extreme of micro mixing where molecular level mixing is achieved and this corresponds to early earliest mixing okay the maximum segregation case is what we have seen that integral ca ca of t into e of t dt right so this corresponds to latest mixing so only in the extremes we can relate these two concepts so one talks about how the mixing is locally and yeah. one talks about when it takes place yeah yeah when it takes place like this so here taking it is taking place at a late stage here it is taking place as soon as this enters so these are the so the basically the situation depends on the relative comparisons between these three kinds of time scales right so in order to just fix this concept a little better let's uh, look at one question here Oh, it's not. Okay, so the question is this. I will pose it. In a, okay. So, a first order reaction with a rate constant of 0.1 second inverse is being carried out in a flow vessel provided with, a, provided with an agitator. The holding time volume divided by volumetric flow equal to holding uh, tau is 20 seconds. Okay, so this is what the designer has allowed for the fluid okay the 95 percent mixing time in the sense of the experiment that we just described for the agitator type and speed is estimated as 0 0.01 seconds so there are these three times right conversion achieved now will depend on so the question is which of these is correct Conversion depends only on tau and RTD and micro mixing do not matter. That is the first option. It depends on the RTD and a micro mixed flow assumption is valid. Third one is it depends on the RTD and a macro mixed flow assumption is more representative, most, more correct. And uh, uh, the last one is RTD and the precise state of micro mixing as well as the earliness or lateness of mixing, all of these matter. Okay, there are these. And I have posted the link already, so now I will start accepting. So usually, we consider this greater than or equivalent in terms of the order of magnitude. Yeah? Order of magnitude. So, when we say much greater than, we are saying a factor of 10. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can already posted the link, so you can. Huh? Link is there, no? Huh? Okay, we'll stop. Sorry. Oh, got all kinds of. <laughs> so let's look at this. So in our case, uh, T reaction is one over uh, what is what is that? Point one or point zero one? Point one. So this is ten. One over point one. So this is ten seconds. And T stay is 20 seconds and T mixing is how much? 0 0.01 second. So this corresponds to this case too. All right. So. RTD is important and then you can make a microfluid assumption. So, B is the choice that is correct. Okay. All right. So, so now we concentrate on um, how to 
calculate the conversion corresponding to a conversion if it is locally molecularly mixed okay maximum mixedness is the term that is used for that state so micro mixed limit of a given rtd or conversion calculation for the case of maximum mixedness corresponding to a given RTD. So this follows from a very elegant analysis that was performed by Sweetering in 1950 in a paper he wrote in 1958 published in Chemin Science. I think I have this paper in the references but otherwise I will post it. So what he said was, you yeah, remember that you know in deciding whether you know the effect of reaction order on the conversion, we talked about life expectancy, right? So he the first thing that he did was to define life expectancy as the time that is for any liquid fluid, the time that is that it will spend before it leaves the reactor. Okay, so this life expectancy is uh, denoted by lambda. So for any given liquid element, it, it there is its internal age, and there is the life expectancy. And if you add the two, it is the exit age. Okay, so internal age plus life expectancy equals exit age. Okay, for any given liquid element, right? Now, he defined the distribution of life expectancy distribution. He defined psi lambda d lambda as the fraction of vessel contents that has a life expectancy in lambda and lambda plus d lambda. Okay. Fraction of vessel contents, the vessel volume is V. Out of this volume V, what fraction has a life expectancy between lambda and lambda plus d lambda? That is called as psi lambda d lambda. So psi lambda will have units of reciprocal time. This is a density distribution and all of that, right? So now we can we can derive a relationship between this and the other distributions that we have defined in the same manner as we derived the the equation for the internal age distribution except that now we concentrate on the uh, we focus on the outlet okay so let's suppose you have this vessel you know is set up and then flow is stabilized and all that it's operating under steady flow conditions and you switch on the clock at time zero and t seconds later you grab a small volume of fluid at the outlet vdt and ask you know what is the content of this VDT okay it has two parts one is when you turned on the clock the liquid that is already there okay a part of that will come out between t and t plus dt seconds right so what is the so if the liquid is already there at time equal to zero and it's going to come out at t seconds then it has a life expectancy of between t and t plus dt Okay, so this has one fraction which is V into psi of T dt. Okay, the other other part is a part of this fluid that is that is coming between zero and t seconds. Okay, when you turn on the switch, the flow is continuously going. Part of that liquid that has entered during this time is leaving 
and that is the F distribution. Part of the liquid uh, that is leaving which has spent between 0 and t seconds within the vessel that is the F distribution, right. So, this is V d t multiplied by F. So, we are measuring at instantaneous instantaneously where it is coming out. Yeah, yeah. You, you can think of it like supposing you give it a step change for example in tracer, right? And then you are measuring this. You will get a this kind of a concentration curve, right? Now this non-tracer is what was there at time equal to 0. And that at that time it had a life expectancy of between uh, you know t and t plus dt. Right. So, this non-tracer is, is this part and the tracer is this part. Okay. So, as usual we do this balance, the total volume of liquid that I have grabbed is V d t into F plus V into psi t dt and I can cancel off t, I can divide by small v, then this is 1 or F plus tau into psi f t or psi is 1 minus f divided by tau. So, it is exactly the same as the I distribution. Okay. Huh? In this we have injected tracer at t equals to t. Zero. T equal to 0. T equal to 0, you switch from water to tracer. So, and then t seconds later, what is coming out is partly water, which was already there at the vessel when you made the injection. And at that time, it had, it is this uh, liquid that had life expectancy of psi lambda d lambda or psi t dt. Yeah? This was for tracer. Huh? This was psi is for tracer. So, the vessel which is already there is non-tracer. When you make the, make the switch over from water to tracer, water is only present within the vessel. Okay. And that water has a life expectancy of, I mean a part of that water has a life expectancy of t, t to t plus dt. Okay. The part of that water which has life expectancy of t to d plus dt is psi t dt. So, if you multiply that by the total volume, that is the amount of non-tracer that is coming out at t seconds. Hmm? You are what? You have not understood the... So, see this non-tracer, the water that is there in the vessel, is going to come out between 0 and infinity, right. So, at t seconds only a part of this water is coming out and that has the, that is this part. Because at any time there is a, uh, there is a life expectancy distribution which is what the fraction of V that has a life expectancy of between t and t plus dt. So, when you made the step change part of the water which is there in the vessel has a life expectancy of t seconds. So, uh, we are starting from t equals to 0 to t, then why t to t plus dt? Huh? We are starting from t equals to 0 yeah. and we are measuring at t equals to t. Yeah. Then uh, how t to t plus dt is named? t to t plus because you cannot, when you take a sample, you cannot take it in zero time. So, dt is a short time which has to be allowed because time is a continuous variable, it is not a discrete variable, right. So, there is nothing like, you know, it is, it is when I say it is 12.05, I cannot say that it is 12.05 in the sense that it does not admit any interval. So, time, we, are, we can only talk about time in intervals. And here, uh, where we have used, uh, so I understood that uh, from t to t, uh, 0 to t we are measuring and dt is time for uh, collecting the sample. Yeah, v dt is the uh, time we take for the sample, right. So, Vdt is a sample that we have drawn, that Vdt has one fraction which was, which is water and which had a life expectancy of psi Tdt when I made the change and that life expectancy because it is steady flow, 
at any time that life expectancy will be the same. So what exactly is life expectancy? Life expectancy is, uh, you know, what is your age? Um, 21. 21. So let us say the you are going to live up to 100 years. Hopefully. Huh? <laughs> right. So your life expectancy at this point is? 70. 79. 79. That is life expectancy. Yeah. So, so it's, like, it's like the potential of how long it could have been in the reactor. Huh. So in your case, you may live up to be 100, you may live up to be 110, 120, who knows, right? But so for a single person, we cannot say, but there is a distribution. Supposing nothing is changing in the world, the medical science is not advancing and the, uh, the we talk about life expectancy in different countries, right? In India, it is 70 plus, in US, it is 80 plus and all that. So that's an average thing. And thanks to advances in medical science, that is going up. All right. Supposing it is constant, then the world is at steady state. Then 80% of the population, I mean, if when we say 8 years is the life expectancy, then the average of this psi of tie, psi of TDT for all the entire population is 80 years. The mean mean life expectancy is 80 years. That is what we mean. So when we are talking about this vessel, this experiment that you are doing right now, huh. there is a potential of it to have a life expectancy of T, the non-trace of it. Yeah, so potential in the sense, it could have been supposing we say that the uh, for T equal to 10 seconds, and psi is let us say 50 percent or 0.5 second inverse, right? What we mean is that so psi of psi of 10 is 0.5, which means that 50 percent of the vessel at any time is ha having a life expectancy of 10 seconds. I mean, 50% of the vessel has 10 seconds left to live in the vessel. In the vessel. Yeah, yeah. It, this is a statistic. Therefore, we are not talking about individual liquid elements here. 50%. So, in other words, when we say that psi of t is equal to i of t, you cannot say that a person who is 60 years old will live, live for 60 more years. The person who is 20 years old will live for 20 years more. It's not, it's, it's an average, it's a statistic. As a fraction of the population, one fraction of the population, whatever fraction of the population has a given life expectancy, the same fraction of the population will have the same internal age. Okay, the fraction of the population that is 20 years old and the fraction of the population that has 20 years left to live are the same. But this fraction is different from that fraction. The number of people, the exact ABC who are in this fraction, are not the same in, in that fraction. So in the experiment that you are trying to do, you are you're taking out some liquid between yeah. T and T plus DT. Yeah. That has both your tracer as well as the fluid. Non-tracer. Yeah. yeah. Non-tracer. So the non-tracer had a expectancy, it could have lived for T seconds. Is that T seconds. T yeah. seconds more. Yeah. And then you And therefore it is coming out after T seconds. Fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then your uh, F distribution is because your tracer has been there from 0 to T. From 0 to T, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so this is the, you know, this is how you connect the life expectancy distribution to the known distributions, right? So having defined this, Sweetling said the following. He said that you give me any vessel with any RTD, right? I have a vessel with some kind of an RTD, right? RTD means E function, right? I will construct an ideal reactor which has the same RTD, right? So what he did was he defined, he took an infinitely long plug flow reactor. This is conceptual anyway. Right, infinitely long plug flow reactor which has infinitely many side entrances. Okay, so the liquid comes in here, 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 and then goes out. Okay, so this is V naught and this is V naught. 
Okay. Now let us say this is E of t is known. Right. Now supposing now I, I calibrate this reactor in terms of time spent by the liquid within the reactor. Okay. So here t equal to 0 and here t is tending to infinity. Okay. Now this liquid is spending between t and t plus dt seconds within the vessel. Right. I mean the vessel is now calibrated. So I write these numbers on the vessel. Right. I write 0 here, I write t here, t plus dt etc. Right. Now supposing I say that this liquid, this volume of liquid that is entering is V0 E of t dt. Okay. In other words, if I call this as V of t dt okay the volume that enters in a small element of time is equal to this then this is the volume that is going to spend t seconds within the vessel you take any other volume it has spent more than t seconds any other volume that is entering here less than t seconds so this is the volume that spends this this time and therefore this uh, I, I can I can fix this from the known E distribution. I can distribute my inlets from the known E distribution and I can see exactly how much uh, volume should enter here, how much volume should enter here. I can do that. Right? Now I, if I measure the residence time distribution there I will get E of t. So you are like combining a number of Dirac delta functions together yeah. to get Correct. Same yeah. 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 Volume. All right, but now look at what this liquid is doing. So it is entering here. This is a plug flow reactor. So there is no mixing between this liquid and the liquid behind it or liquid ahead of it. Okay. So it enters this when inside the reactor it is not talking to any fellow. Okay. So this is corresponding to this RTD. So this is a segregated flow extreme. Or we can say, no, no, sorry, I made a mistake. So this is, it's the reverse. Let me take a, the same infinite reactor. So T equal to 0 here t tending to infinity there, I am putting all the liquid here, V0 and taking it out at different times, side exits. So this is between t and t plus dt and so there is some liquid coming out here and this is V0. Okay, and this will be V naught E of T dt is what is coming out at that. Okay, so if I do this, if I measure the RTD here, it has, you know, it has corresponding at each time, it has what corresponds to E of T. Right, so this is the liquid that is spending for spending exactly T seconds within the vessel. This has spent t seconds within the vessel. After t seconds, it came out. Right? This came out immediately at zero. Right? So you are allowing each side stream exactly the amount of time that is required as per the t e distribution. Right? But now, if you look at the liquid, this is a plug flow reactor. So it entered. It is not talking to anyone else. It has spent t seconds without mixing with anybody, and then it is going out. So this is a segregated flow reactor. Okay. So this is maximally macro mixed.
right? Now, how would you convert the conversion in such a reactor? You have to uh, you have to add the conversions in all the side streams, right? So, if you take any particular side stream, its conversion is C A at that time, as you would expect in a batch reactor, and so there is E of T dt of fluid with that con concentration. So this you integrate between 0 and infinity and this is the average concentration at that point. And this is our, this is what we have derived earlier also, right. So this is the segregated flow, so it justifies that, okay. So now let us do the reverse. Let us take the same infinite plug flow reactor, but now I have, I am making the liquid enter at different points, okay. And now I will talk about life expectancies, okay. So here it is life expectancy is 0, okay. yeah, it is just you know, nothing more left to live right it is on the deathbed it just goes out right so here lambda is tending to infinity right so now if you look at so lambda is increasing from the outlet to the inlet it is zero and goes to infinity right so this is lambda and this is lambda plus d lambda now if you look at the how much fluid is coming out here, coming in here, supposing I make it V naught E lambda D lambda, not say, so, so this e, e, I want to generate this, the same curve here, right, so I am looking at so this now in and I am calling it time as lambda, mm -hmm. right. So now if I look at lambda plus d lambda, this is the part of this liquid which has spent exactly t seconds or between t and t plus dt seconds within the vessel or lambda plus lambda and lambda plus d lambda, right. Now that this is the, that liquid, right. This is the liquid that is spending exactly this, okay. So now this reactor will also give me the same RTD. But look at what is happening. As soon as a liquid enters the reactor, because the plug flow reactor is perfectly mixed in the radial direction along the cross section, it immediately mixes completely with whatever liquid is there at that point. So the liquid is coming in, it enters and whatever is there, it completely mixes with that. And in that mixed state, it spends the rest of the life, okay. So this corresponds to the maximum mixedness limit corresponding to the same RTD. The RTD does not know what is happening, right. So if we can con calculate the conversion for this kind of a reactor, then we can calculate the conversion corresponding to the maximum mixedness limit of the given RTD, okay. So this is the postulate and we can do that very easily. This we know how to calculate, so we do not have to worry about that. So if I take any particular volume, this volume, okay, and look at where all is the, let us say they, there is a reaction A going to products taking place and rate of production of A is Ra, a usual definition. Now this one has something entering here whose concentration is Ca0, right? And how much is entering? The weight of this is V0 into E of lambda d lambda, right? And something is entering at, this is lambda plus d lambda, 
this is lambda. So, the volume that is entering here is the integration of all of these from here to there. Right? So, you take V naught E lambda D lambda integrate from 0 to lambda plus D lambda and that is the flow rate. And what is its concentration? It is whatever concentration there is at lambda plus D lambda. So, if I am making a balance for A, this much of A is entering at this point, this much of A is entering from the from outside and something is leaving and the flow rate of this is similarly 0 to lambda V naught E lambda D lambda multiplied by concentration C A at lambda. Okay. So, what is our balance? Our balance is steady state balance. So, the amount of A that is entering in various ways minus the amount uh, plus whatever A is produced within this volume is the A that is leaving. Right? A, how much A is pro produced here? So, what is this volume? This is the volume that has a life expectancy of lambda. Right? So, this volume is V into psi of lambda d lambda. Right? And this volume has to be multiplied by Ra to get the rate of production of A in that volume. Okay? So, we do the balance. What is entering Ca naught V naught E lambda D lambda plus C A lambda plus D lambda into now what is this? Sorry, this is 0 the infinity because I am counting from the far end, right? Inlet. So, infinity to lambda. So, if the lower limit was 0, it would be f of lambda. Uh, uh, yeah. If the lower limit was 0, yeah. it would be f of lambda. And so, it is 1 minus f of lambda plus d lambda. That is 0 to infinity minus uh, infinity to lambda plus d lambda. Okay. This is entry plus what is produced that is V psi lambda d lambda equals what is leaving. So, this is similarly C A lambda into 1 minus F of lambda. Yeah, so this is V naught. Yeah, there is a V naught here. Not okay. So, if we combine these two, if I take it to the left hand side, then I have and divide by d lambda. So, d lambda will go there. Mm -hmm. Now, so this is multiplied by R A of C A. So, if I divide by d lambda throughout and take the limits as d lambda tends to 0, I get d by d lambda of C A into 1 minus F. Okay, this minus that multiplied by V naught plus V into psi lambda array of C A equal to 0. Okay. So, if I split this derivative, I have 
V naught into 1 minus F into DCA upon D lambda plus V naught into CA into this is minus E. Minus DF by D lambda is minus E, right? So, EF lambda plus V into psi is 1 minus F divided by tau into RA CA equal to 0. Okay. Supposing I divide by V naught, this one goes, that one goes, V by V naught is tau, so it will cancel with this. Okay. And I divide by 1 minus F, I finally have DCA by D lambda minus one term got left out. Achha. Ah, this one. Okay, we missed out on that. So this is so this minus this gives this derivative. Then there is this term. Okay, so so there is this C A naught V naught we have cancelled out, right? So this gives uh, plus C A naught minus C A into E lambda by 1 minus F. I am dividing by 1 minus F, okay, plus R E of C A equal to 0 is the equation that tells you how the concentration is varying in this infinite uh, plug flow reactor. What the concentration is at any point, any at any lambda is not of any interest to us. What is the concentration at the outlet is what we want to calculate because that gives the conversion. So we solve this equation with this, what is the initial, what is the end condition? We know that as lambda tends to infinity, concentration should tend to C A naught at the inlet or equivalently we can say because concentration is increasing okay, from outlet to inlet but it cannot keep on increasing. It has to level out at some stage therefore as we can say that lambda tends to infinity we can say that D C A by D lambda should tend to 0. Either of these conditions can be used. Using this you integrate it uh, backwards till I mean you assume some concentration at the outlet integrate it backwards see what is the CA naught you are getting if that is not correct you assume something else so like that if you if you do the calculation then you can get the concentration at the outlet which is the concentration corresponding to the micro mix or maximum mixedness limit of the given RTD. So this equation has a Rate are in. So it will also depends on the order of the question. Uh, order yeah, of yeah. Rate is uh, given, depends on the order of the reaction. So the reaction characteristics appear only here. The rest of it is all flow. Yeah. So this uh, equation then gives you the required micro mix limit for the, you know, given RTD. And how do we know that, you know, this uh, derivation looks very nice and all that? But how do we test this? Okay, we can test it for the CSTR. For the CSTR, for the exponential RTD, if it is micro mixed, then we should get the traditional RTD, I mean traditional equation, right? Which is, you know, that input output balance, say we, whatever equation we have, we should get that. Okay, so we will do that when we come back. Right?